Well, as we get closer to the general election in November, some are starting to discuss the future of Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor. There is increasing debate on whether the 69-year-old should retire while President Biden is still in office, and the Democrats have control of the Senate. That would allow President Biden to put a younger Democratic justice in her place and keep that left-leaning vote for years to come. Top Democratic lawmakers have not joined this push for her retirement, but there is growing concern of a repeat of what happened with Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We all remember that. Yeah, Justice Ginsburg declined to step down while President Barack Obama was in office. So when she passed away in 2020, then President Donald Trump replaced her vote with uh, Justice Amy Coney Barrett. This is how we got our current conservative-leaning court, which led to the reversal of Roe v. Wade. Now, if Trump wins the election and Justice Sotomayor's seat needs to be filled while he is in office, seven of the nine justice justices would be right-leaning, and nearly half of the court would have been appointed by Donald Trump. The White House says it's a personal choice for Justice Sotomayor, and they are not getting involved. So here with us uh, to talk about his analysis is Paul Collins. He is a legal and political science professor at the University of Massachusetts. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Justice Sotomayor, who is 69, is 12 years younger than Justice uh, Ginsburg when calls for her to retire began in 2014. Now, we obviously understand uh, some fears that we just kind of ran through of history repeating itself and what that may mean for the court. Is this more of an indictment, I guess, on the confidence of some liberals of what's going to happen in this next election more than um, Justice Sotomayor actually needing to step down right now at 69? Thank you so much for having me on. I, I think it's really an indication of just how big a shadow Ruth Bader Ginsburg casts, right? And so I think progressives, liberals, they have good reason to worry a little bit about whether or not Joe Biden's going to win re-election, whether or not he's going to have an opportunity to appoint a Supreme Court justice. And that shadow of RBG is a very, very long shadow. And while we haven't seen really strong efforts to encourage Justice Sotomayor to retire, we know, as you mentioned, that, that progressives are talking about this. So Justice Sotomayor is the first woman of color to serve on the U.S. Supreme Court. We know in this era, progressives, they want more women. They want more people of color on the high court. How are optics playing a role in this whole debate? They absolutely are. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a sensitivity among liberals, both on Capitol Hill and more generally, that it doesn't look great to try to encourage the first woman of color to retire early to ensure that President Biden could appoint her successor. It's also useful to note that you know, while it seems like Justice Sotomayor has been on the court for a long time, she really hasn't. The, the average tenure of a Supreme Court justice these days is about a quarter century, um, and Justice Sotomayor is nowhere near that. The current court already has a 6-3 conservative majority, as we know. Um, so maybe paint a picture for our viewers of what a 7-2 to two majority would look like if Sotomayor's seat were to be filled under a Republican administration. What type of issues do you think we could now be talking about in that situation? So the court has taken a very, very sharp conservative turn with the 6-3 majority. With the 7-2 to two majority, you would expect that to continue, and I think you would also expect it to perhaps harden, meaning that we see from time to time Chief Justice Roberts and, to a lesser extent, Justice Barrett and Justice Kavanaugh vote with the liberals. If, if there were seven conservative justices, I, I don't think you would see that as frequently. I also think that if you had seven Republican appointed justices on the court and if Donald Trump was elected president, I think Justice Thomas would very seriously consider retiring, um, which is something that there's absolutely no way he is going to do with the Democrat in office. And if Thomas were to retire, then that would ensure a conservative majority for many, many, many years. I want to get your thoughts on the overall public perception of the Supreme Court. There's a survey out from Marquette Law School that finds 53% of Americans disapprove mm -hmm. of the Supreme Court's performance. This is actually slightly better than the 60% disapproval uh, rating they got earlier this year. But the court has, of course, been facing public scrutiny for years. Some lawmakers say term limits are the answer to this issue. What will bring those numbers up? 
So this is complicated, but a lot of the blame would be on the court itself. So that's that sharp turn to the right. In other words, the court may have moved too fast. Um, and particularly, as you noted at the opening, the Dobbs decision to overrule Roe versus Wade really didn't sit well. In fact, the majority of both Republicans and Democrats um, supported upholding Roe versus Wade. So some of these wounds are self-inflicted. Um, I would add to, to that the scandals that some justices on the Supreme Court find themselves involved in, particularly mm -hmm. Justice Thomas. And while President Biden did put a commission together to study reforming the Supreme Court, and it did talk about um, term limiting Supreme Court justices, which I actually believe is probably the most important reform we could make, there doesn't seem to be a lot of progress on that front.